Hi loves, Jere Millet, a girl from around the way. We have culture, conversation, and community. In today's video, I'm coming to you all with a BMF stars, or stars BMF, stars BMF a season one, episode one review. The name of this episode is called See It, Touch It, Obtain It. I'm like, you better go ahead, think and grow rich. <laughs> all right, so let's just hop right into it. This episode starts off with Big Meech and him coming home. It was like 2005. And he's having, you know, he's greeted by his boy. He's having a really nice, like, coming home party. And you know you're really from the hood when you've been to or you've known somebody who's had a coming home party <laughs> and not coming home from college and not coming home from the military, okay? And, um, you know, it's giving us, giving us good, you know, flashback, you know, present day going back and forth. And the episode also kicks off with showing young Meech and young T or Terry and the dad works at General Motors. Obviously, the big Meech character or little Meech at the time was the one who kind of put his brother Terry on with the OG pets. And it shows how that whole um, intro to the drug game started. We got a quick, cute little song by 50 Cent. The uh, theme song is not giving me anything that I even want to mention. And if you watch any of my other reviews, I love me a good theme song. And Power, we all know how we felt about that Power theme song. It's not giving that. The episode then goes into a beef that kind of like was about to start but didn't start between the 50 Boys and 12th Street. And basically, um, Terry was about to pull up. Terry pulled out a gun. He said, nigga, you got you a pow pow, <laughs> a pew pew, or whatever the case. And Meech looked at his brother like, bro, what is you doing? We trying to like, you know, we ain't trying to start no war. We don't have the numbers to go to war. And this is not what we want right now. But they have a little squabble over territory. And you can obviously see that Terry was kind of like a wild cannon in this role and his brother Meech was kind of like chilling. Yeah Meech pretty much disagreed you know he felt like we were supposed to buck up at them niggas and we didn't do that it might come back to haunt us but more importantly Meech is looking at him like we got to get this gun out the house because if mama find this it is it's over with <laughs> basically which pretty much shows that these were just regular regular boys these were regular kids you know when crack hit it was a lot of like regular niggas making major major money and it shows they were still doing regular kid stuff but in a grown man's lane or so to so to speak dad comes home he's clearly like the head honcho of the family he's like take that chain off while you sitting at my table busting all this you know what I mean at Meech clearly Meech is the one who is the black sheep of the family whereas Terry is beloved they want him to bless the food you know they're talking you know in, in a positive light about him anytime they mention Meech they just look inside out the dad is waiting to say something jump down his neck or something like that the dad don't fuck with Meech basically then we're introduced to a character named Lamar we have a little Coney burger situation he goes to the burger joint he like yeah I want me a uh what do you say a Lucy burger or something he's like sir we don't do that anymore and he just pretty much just goes off on a boy, beats him up real good. And I'm like, okay, old boy's crazy. We had Big Meech meeting up with his OG Pats. And he was like, yeah, I heard you got into a little issue over your territory. You let them niggas just do whatever they was going to do. They get up. You let them niggas just do whatever they was going to do. You know what I'm saying? You were supposed to let them know. He was like, well, I ain't really want to do that. And then the bust out into this bigger situation than what it needed to be. But you know what I mean? You could tell that OG passed. He said, I forgot the guy that plays this role, but he's good. He always plays a good gangster. He said something up with the coach. And I'm like, what is he setting up? Is the community activism? Is he involved? I'm like, okay, coach. We'll have to see how that plays out. Next, in the next scene, we have Terry or T. He's in school and he's, you know, has a substitute teacher. The teacher's talking about Carl Max and one of the boys in the school is just keeps talking about teenage pregnancy and wearing a Jimmy hat and you got a bitch pregnant and you went are you and your brother going to take turns babysitting so somebody can come to class and they almost get into a fight he gets kicked out of school as Terry is coming home okay mom and dad is sitting down with Meech because mom done found the gun she doing laundry and found the gun it's always like that right the mom is in there being nosy and she found the gun okay and the father's not having it like i'm not letting you around my kids no more you gotta get out whole time it's really t's gun he never said nothing and he's like listen i'm doing this for us you working at that 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 uh general motors and we behind on the mortgage and this and the third i got money gave him a lot of money he's like i don't want your money you almost get into a scuffle and you know it's bad when a son and a dad get tussling and fighting whether they, they go to blows or not if you about to get into a fight with your dad is is a cardinal sin okay so it was it was bad it was major they end up leaving so Meech ended up like fuck y'all i'm out so where does he go 
to his baby mama's house, of course. Because when niggas ain't got nowhere to go, they love shacking up with they chick. So, uh, in the scene, you know, we have a cute little sex scene with Cash Doll. And at first, I didn't know who it was. I'm like, who was this chick? It was giving me very much. Y'all remember Keisha off of Belly? It was giving that, but no oil. <laughs> okay, but Ke I'm like, Cash Doll, who knew? Who knew that that's what you was working with? I mean, I guess some people knew she was a dancer. I didn't know. I didn't know that that's what she was, that's what she was giving the girls, but she was giving the girls. And um, in the process of this, you know, you can tell they have a cute little baby daddy, baby mama situation, situationship. And um, she like, I don't know why you're still living there with your parents. It sounds so dysfunctional. In the process of her, you know, handling what she had to do with him, she goes to the door. And it's the boy from the burger place. And he's showing up like, yeah, give my baby girl this necklace and da da da, -da. She's like, I already told you, the baby not yours. And I'm like, ooh not the baby not yours and you steadfast on it because you know baby moms be hurt when, <laughs> when they don't be the baby daddy's kids and all that and she's like the baby not yours you need to get yourself together first and you can tell that he's really attached to this girl he's kind of hurt he's like i want you to give her this bracelet or this necklace she takes it she kind of holds it looking like you know what that's cool but my baby daddy the one the kid that is his is upstairs so He's leaving out the house. Meech is leaving out the house, and Lamar just sitting there, just waiting to see. Cause she, he are probably already knew. Like, yeah, she in there with some nigga. He waiting to see who it is. It's out comes Meech. He just rolls up on him, hit him, bow. He pretty much just said, "You keep fucking my bitch, and I next time I ain't gonna miss." And I was just like, "Damn!" So he just looking like, "Nigga, yeah, nigga, whatever." But you know, he was saying like, you know, Lamar is a legend. He's not one of those people who you want to play with. Basically, he went away to prison. The lawyers pleaded for insanity. He was supposed to do four years in a crazy house, end up doing two because Bush came in and let everybody in the crazy house out. So he's major institutionalized and he used to run shit back in the day. Now he come home after being locked up. He used to run stuff. He see these little young boys running this stuff and at the same time messing with his baby mama who baby wasn't even really his. So you know, it's gonna be a real major beef between them. The next thing we have the mom Lucille and the dad pretty much discuss the mortgage. She like, how do we get behind on the mortgage? I go to work every day i give you all the money and she said listen the car went down the car went down and i had to get fixed and i just love that because so many black people so many people in general like we are one paycheck away <laughs> one paycheck away from be from being broke from being behind on rent or behind on a mortgage or behind on a car payment or i can't eat or something is going on and that just speaks to like the situation like that was back in the 80s or like and shit is so prevalent today, okay? Like, poverty is a very real thing, y'all. And this whole paycheck to paycheck life, it's not it. You can go to work every day and do what you gotta do, but if the cost of living doesn't match what you were getting paid, it don't matter. It don't matter, not, not unless you're out here killing yourself. You know what I'm saying? They want you to be out here working and slaving, shucking and jiving and doing all this shit so, you, so that way you can just have enough to live, not even live comfortably. That's another conversation, girl, because I feel it rising up in my spirit. So I'm going to just move right along. So in the next scene, we have T showing up to his uh, baby shower. And the baby mama is giving me very much like early 80s, 90s realness. I love the costumes of it all. They're all doing what they need to do. He like, listen, I want to stay here with all these women. I done paid for the liquor. I done paid for the, the food. And you know it's a real ghetto baby shower when you got liquor there. Like, why is the liquor at baby showers? ghetto anyway so he leaves and in the next scene we see the coach that i thought that Meech was doing some community activism with go up to the lady miss griffin who wouldn't let them sling crack <laughs> in front of her recreation center and um he pretty much just said you see this this little thing if you don't let them boys in front of the rec center then um i'm going to plant this on your son basically and that's what crack did if it didn't affect your family as far as addiction or violence, it affected you in a different way. Even when you wanted to try to stop and do the right thing, the money had a stronghold on the community. Because again, we got people who are one paycheck away. We have people who are one paycheck away from losing it all. So cash is king. There's no other way to put it. Meech and his mom <clears throat> sit down. They have a really good scene where... You know, he's like, Mom, I have the money. Just take the money. You know what I'm saying? And she's like, I can't take this money. One day, if you live long enough to see your kids make mistakes, and you'll understand why I can't take this money. And I mean, I can only imagine being a parent during this time if I wasn't, no, not me, child, what I'm talking about. If a parent wasn't strung out, 
addicted to crack at the time then they had so many other obstacles to face you get what i'm saying if you're trying to live ethically and moral morally and you see your son making buku money when crack first hit i don't think people really understand the weight of it i don't truly understand the weight of it either because baby i was born in the 90s early 90s and thankfully my parents were crackheads i, I hope i ain't offended nobody <laughs> Because it's a lot of people in the family who fucked around. You get what I'm saying? Like, let's just keep it real. We're going to keep it real. We're going to keep it real. But, and just because your parents aren't crackheads, if you were born in the early 90s, like, there were some crack things that happened. You know what I'm saying? They may not be crack heads, but they have crack, like, tendencies because they grew up in the era. So, why am I going off on a tangent like this? What I'm trying to make is the mom was basically saying, listen, Meech, you gotta chill because T is watching everything that you're doing. And I'm your mom, I'm broke, you got all this money, but I can't take it because morally I know that it's wrong. And not too many people were doing that, so she had to stand, you know, stand strong on her decision. And it was hard for the son to do it because I see y'all struggling, the daughter can't go to the field trip, but I have the money, let's just get the money, <laughs> okay? I just imagine it being a really difficult time as a parent if your kids are making way more money than you so you want me to go work at a factory and work minimum wage and live like you versus go out here and sell us a little bit of packet or something that's pretty much selling itself it was just temptation all around temptation to get money or temptation to get high and it was you you was just gonna have to pick your poison somewhere along the line and if even if you didn't choose you were still impacted and that was the point i was trying to make earlier girl it had to come around full circle <laughs> so in the next scene we have like them trying to figure out how are they going to rebrand their product basically because the $50 bags are no longer working for where they're at and they said pretty much we just want to recook it you know we're going to cook it up step on it a little bit less rebrand it give it to pumpkin who I'm guessing is like a known crackhead and get it out there you know what I'm saying and, and so they have a cute little run DMC moment where they're getting it bagging it all up you know what I mean getting this shit rebranded the next thing we have them going to club taboo Meech and Terry look good they looked good okay and everybody looks good everybody look good the girl who plays in um snowfall she's also in there i think she has that whole natural 90s early late 80s early 90s natural look to her and she just she's just getting them rolled in the bar everybody looking like money everybody pulling up in benzes everybody's looking like money lamar's sitting at the bar he all hurt and crazy and shit niggas just trying to buy him any and trying to get him put him onto the team he like i ain't even trying to do that i ain't trying to hear it niggas like i knew i shouldn't have said nothing to him he's crazy they say he's too institutionalized so meech wants to mention to pats about getting more product t told him it wasn't a good idea and he said well, we doing it anyway it was almost a cute little quick little brawl in the club but Meech shut it down with the boy who was talking about T in the classroom. Meech shut it down like none of that shit's happening right now. Y'all good. Then we see Lala. She's giving me very much Keisha from Power. Like she's in her same little roles. And apparently she is the wife of one of Pat's business associates. They pull Pat to the side because... They want to give him, you know, his birthday gift. They give him the birthday gift. He like, listen, we all out of product. We ready to re up again. And he looking like, nigga, what? It ain't time for y'all to re up again. He said, how y'all sell? I just, I just saw y'all last week. He said, yeah, well, we out. He said, y'all niggas just trying to go to jail. He like, nah, but product sells. It's selling itself. We want more. He like, nah. If you know that saying, God ain't gonna give you too much that you can't handle. He said, well, in this situation, I'm God, little nigga, and y'all ain't getting no more. I'm like, but ain't the pro, ain't the purpose is to make money. And at this point, T is just looking at him like, I told you right now wasn't a good time. Meech is like, you know, after leaving the party, like, man, this is the last time. Fuck being a boss. I'm trying to be a king. You know what I mean? And we need to get this money. I'm tired of being told no. I'm tired of being pushed around. And that was kind of like the spark, I'm assuming, you know, for next level business transactions. Okay, I'm trying to keep this above ground. And the next thing we have them about to meet up, I don't know, maybe with a new plug, a new connect, who knows. And um t is home with the baby they just oh yeah wanda had the baby and he's like yo get over here so the baby mama's like go outside and go get the pacifier in the process of him going to get the pacifier somebody just roll up to him side of him bow just shot him in the face it looked like it looked like he was shot in the face that was the end of the episode people that was the end of the episode it was really good i haven't watched power in a long time so whatever i really 50 Cent rubs me the wrong way, period, sis, and I really don't like really watching anything involved with him. But I wanted to see this because I know this is big for Detroit. I know this is big for the culture and the movement. However, ghetto, violence, whatever, this is just a part of what it is. 
and here we are so let me know what y'all think about the bmf series so far this is episode one and it started off slow i couldn't really get into it but it picked up for me leave a comment down below let me know what you think give me a thumbs up and subscribe it really helps my channel i will be here reviewing this series because i'm going to be watching it like i like this type of stuff <laughs> ghetto i don't as always i'm sending you much love and much light and i will see you in the next video peace